Last week was Easter, and as we talked about in our uh, talk at communion, it was Resurrection Sunday. And as we are contemplating that, I wanted to do that one more Sunday, talk about the resurrection uh, another time. You see, I believe that Jesus' resurrection changed everything. And I believe it's going to, to show us eight powerful truths of what it offers us today. In other words, how it impacts us as we live our lives as Christians. The message that Paul and the early church preached declared that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world and the Lord of life. He died a voluntary death and suffered crucifixion as the Savior of the world. He bore our sins in his body on the cross, but he died as a victorious Savior. In this voluntary death, he won the victory over sin, a victory over death and hell, and was raised to the newness of resurrection life. You see, the resurrection endorsed, proclaimed, and demonstrated the victory that Jesus won on the cross. He died as our Savior, but he now lives as our Lord. So what does that mean for us today? Those are, those are all nice words, right? It's, it's all well and dandy that we say that that those things are what it actually uh, is. But what does that mean for us today? And then also, on the other side, what does the resurrection provide for us? Okay, God has done this, but, but what, is it, what does it actually do? First of all, the resurrection proves who Jesus is. The, the idea is that we have all throughout the Old Testament... The idea that someone is coming. Someone is coming who is going to save the people from their sins. Someone is coming who is going to be the great counselor. Uh, someone who is coming who is going to, to guide us to where we need to be. In Romans 1, 4, it says this. And Jesus Christ, our Lord, was shown to be the Son of God when God powerfully raised him from the dead by the means of the Holy Spirit. And notice here, it doesn't say resurrection here, but it says raised from the dead. You see, proof, demonstration of who he is. He was resurrected, and this shows him to be the one who he said he was. You see, there's nothing like the power of Jesus' resurrection from the dead that proves to a lost world that he is indeed who he says he is. After all, what happened after Muhammad died? What happened after Simatra Gudra, or the Buddha, died? After Mohat Mugande died, what happened? When Mary Baker Eddy died, where is she today? You see, Jesus Christ in the resurrection shows us he is Lord. That mean, and when I say Lord, that's capital L-O-R-D. He is, he is God. He is Yahweh. He is, he is the one who created. He is also Savior. He is king. He, he's the one in control. He is victorious. He is risen. And as I've just mentioned, many false prophets throughout history claim to be God or attempt to lead people astray. But no one else has given their lives for a lost world. And then, miraculously, been resurrected up from the dead. Jesus is the only one who holds the power over sin and death, who offers a fresh 
beginning and a new life. Folks, who hasn't been so down and out in this world and so hurting and so beaten up that they didn't feel like they needed a new beginning? I, I know that you have been there before. Uh, this, this, this world, this life will knock you out. But what Jesus says, you can get up. You can get up and go where he wants you to go. Number two, Jesus' resurrection offers us the gift of forgiveness. That's what the good news is, folks. The fact that we get to uh, go along in life and we make choices every day. And, and I don't know about you, not all the choices that I make every day are good choices. Yeah, I know. I know that's disappointing to some of you that, that uh, I admit that I stumble along the way. But that is the truth. But the resurrection, that is... Uh, this, this death and then this new life is a gift of forgiveness. In Romans 6, 10 through 11, it says, The death he died, he died once and for all. But now, the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. You see, folks, according to Acts 2.38, when we repent and we are baptized, we are forgiven of our sins, the remission of our sins. The sins are taken care of. And we have newness of life to be resurrected up into. You see, Jesus conquered sin and death. Uh, he, he did this on the cross, and he rose again, demonstrating his power over darkness. You see, love provided a way for us to be, give, to be forgiven once and for all. He loosened the chains. He broke off the locks. He opened the way for us to walk in forgiveness that he graciously offers. He wiped the slate clean. He paid the debt that we owe. He now gives us the choice to come to him and ask for forgiveness and freedom from sin that he alone can offer. However, what we do know is that many will still choose to turn away and walk through this life doing the things on their own. And our, our request, our thought is, may God give them the wisdom to choose to walk daily in the powerful forgiveness that Jesus provides. Number three, the resurrection offers us the gift of salvation. And I think this is one of the, the great aspects of, of resurrection. Romans 10, 9 says this, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I'm going to tell you, this is one of the most misused scriptures out there. Because what you're going to hear from our friends all around is that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then you will be saved. They forget about the resurrection. The resurrection is tied to it. One of the most important doctrines that you can believe in today is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Notice, uh, if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, so it's not just a head thing, it's a heart thing. It's relational. We have to actually love God in this. It's with our hearts. Believe in your heart. And you, you will be saved. Folks, this idea isn't saying that you don't need to be baptized here. He's just, he's just uh, peeling back layers here so that you can see what you need to know. Confession is important. Belief is Im important here. But remember, it's a heart thing too. It's not just a logical sequence of, of events. There's going to be some faith involved in this. 
You see, the message of the cross is that Jesus paid our penalty for death when he chose to die on our behalf. You see, he took our place so that we could be saved. You see, up on the cross, with outstretched arms, with nails going through the feet and the hands, should be you and I. It was us that sinned and fell short of the glory of God. But Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice because he never sinned. Not once. He was the only one who could make the way for a great rescue of mankind. And the power of his resurrection means this. He didn't stay dead. He's still not in the tomb. Death could not hold him back. Darkness could not bury love. And him uh, in the grave, he could not be held in the grave. You see, Jesus broke through all that, and his nail-scarred hands that reached out to rescue a lost world is still reaching out today to you. There are hands that are saying, look, look, the price has been paid for your sins. It's more than just knowing facts in your head. It's also believing the truth in your heart. That's where the change takes place. That's how we are affected by the gospel and the power of Christ. He came to seek and to save all who are lost. Folks, that's Luke 19.10, by the way. And there's, that's the message of resurrection power. God came to save you. Number four. Jesus' resurrection gives us the ability to live free. That's a tough one, folks. Because usually when we think of free will, in the idea of free will, it means that I can just uh, run willy-nilly all over the board, and I can do. Well, here's the facts, folks. You can. God says you can go and do what you want to do. But the other part of it is he's going to hold you accountable. Now, in John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet he shall live. You still have things you have to do. You have this great freedom, and one of the great choices that you have is to believe in Jesus. You see, Jesus himself is the only one who can give us new life. No one else holds or even has ever held that power. Jesus redeems our past and restores our brokenness. Jesus gives us great strength and great peace. And Jesus gives us hope and a future. His victory over death, uh, as believers believe him, uh, unchain us from the hold of the darkness and no longer under the grip of the enemy. Right. Satan no longer holds on to you if you claim Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Death has been defeated. Satan has been defeated. The demons of this world cannot touch you if you proclaim Jesus as your leader and Lord. Though we will still face battles and struggles in life, Many days we will find ourselves under attack or up against spiritual forces that try to defeat us. However, we know where true power is found. True power, folks, is in Jesus Christ. True power is believing that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. True power is the fact that Jesus Christ is willing to take on the battle with you and for you. Number five, the resurrection gives us hope. And folks, if there is anything, I believe, uh, in our relationship with God that really unburdens us is that we have the carrot that is out there in front of us uh, leading us on toward heaven. This, this dangling hope, this hope, we know that it's out there. We know what it's going to cost. We know what it's for. 
Ephesians 1, 18 through 21. That you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his in, uh, glorious inheritance in the saints? What is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ, and when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in this age or in the age to come. We have hope because the power is unending. The, the power is, is not just here yesterday, but it's also out there tomorrow. Notice it's not just power over local things, but it's over global things. You see, because of his power over the grave, he is a living hope. He's not a dead hope. He may have died, but he, he was resurrected. He didn't stay in that grave. He got out of the grave and... According to scriptures, he was with us for 40 days afterward, and over 500 people witnessed him. You see, the only true promise of lasting hope in this life can be found in Christ. He is stronger than all things that we can, uh, he, he is stronger than all things that we can face here in this world. Remember, he created them. First, uh, uh, Colossians 1 tells us uh, that he is the creator of everything, all, uh, not, only, not only invisible, but visible. Uh, I always like that because if, how do you know what he created that was invisible? But he did, and it's there, and he has power over it. Thank goodness. He defeated the powers that seek to pull us from him. I know you feel it. You, you see the, the ads on TV, the ads in magazines, uh, the songs on the radio, uh, the, the movies in the theater. Everything is telling us that there is more fun in sin than in believing in Christ. But Jesus says, my way is the best way. You see, he's the author of hope and the giver of peace in times when we experience troubles or struggles. And I know I've said that uh, once already today or twice, but that's the facts, folks. We have hard times to face. And even if you've faced hard times in the past, that doesn't mean there won't be some in the future. And even if you have never faced hard times, they could be coming. Jesus is going to be with you. If you found your hope has run dry through the difficult seasons you're facing, ask him for help. In refreshment, refreshment. Remember, he's, he's living water. He's, he's the water that, dry, uh, that, that actually uh, takes away the dryness in your mouth. And let me tell you, uh, I always wonder what... What autonomic reaction I'm going to have when I get up to speak? I don't know if it's uh, sweat, uh, dry mouth, uh, you know, eyes, eyes that are twittering. Today it's dry mouth, by the way. But I call on Jesus, and, and Jesus takes care of that. If you found your hope is run dry through difficult seasons you're facing, ask him for help and refreshment in your life. His hope never runs short in short supply. He promises to provide all that we need to, and to live, in, uh, to live in strength in the future. He provides. He is promising for us. Also, the resurrection. This is number six. The resurrection means we have the power of Christ dwelling in us. I'll tell you what. That's one of the greatest things that, that I believe that we can uh, understand. In Acts 2.38, I've quoted it um, already, but repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, all right? And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You have the indwelling of the Spirit within you. Within you. Do you catch that? 
God takes a piece of himself off and gives it to you to carry around, to go with you. John, John, uh, in John 14, 15, 16, it's going to talk about the paraclete, the comforter, the one who is going to guide you through life. This is Jesus. The resurrected Jesus is going to be with you, walking every step of the way. Acts 4.33 says, And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. This grace that falls on you when you believe is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. God wants to guide you throughout your life. He wants to come into you and be with you. Folks, what a great gift that is. See, the fact that Jesus rose from his grave reveals his miraculous and mighty power. I've already, I've already mentioned all the other leaders of all the other uh, man-made religions that are out there, and I still ask the question, which one of them has come back from the grave? Which one of them is, uh, is, is actually was witnessed by 500 people? Still, the answer is zero. You see, uh, this, this, it shows the Christ is victorious over all. There's nothing in life that, that Jesus can't be victorious over. And if, if you read through Matthew or uh, some of the great Gospels, you see that he defeats uh, death. He defeats uh, sin. Uh, let's see. He will defeat disease. If the waves are crashing in on the boat, Jesus can say, peace be still, and the waves stop. If the demons are in the man who's on the side of the shore, when Jesus come on, he can tell those demons to leave, and they rush off into a herd of pigs. He's powerful over everything. There's nothing in this creation that can actually overcome him. Because of that, he gives us the confidence that we need to hold on to so that when we feel weak, we're aware that he indeed is strong. If you have some of Jesus within you, you can lean on that, and he will take hold of you. He helps us in our weaknesses. He works miracles in our lives, even when we can't fully see all that he's doing. Sometimes he's at work, and you don't even know it. Sometimes the miracle has already occurred, and later on you look back and you go, I do not know how I got to where I am today. You see, he is fighting on our behalf still today. Jesus knew we would need help when he left this world. So he gave us a spirit to indwell in us. You see, the resurrection of Jesus offers the promise of eternal life with him in heaven. Jesus didn't just show up, say what he had to say, and go away. He wanted to make sure that we knew that this was an everlasting event. 1 Peter 1, 3 and 4 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Notice, notice, I mean, we could spend years unpacking this particular statement. But here, through the resurrection from the dead, we have gained an inheritance. Notice this inheritance, first of all, imperishable. It's not going to rot. It's not going to rust. It's undefiled. That means it's unblemished. And it's unfading. It's not going to lose its glow. It's not going to lose uh, its sparkle or shine. And by the way, where is it kept? It's going to be kept in heaven. God is holding on to it for you so that you can claim what is rightfully yours. And what does that tell us, folks? Folks, this is the lesson for today, okay? I want you to catch this. 
uh, you're going to say, this is, uh, boy, th Buddy is a genius when I say this. Okay, I know you're not going to. Okay, here's the deal. The world, this world, is not all there is. Man, we live in this world while, like we think this is the only thing that's ever going to happen. Uh, a lot of times when we are on our deathbed, we are grabbing onto the sheets and holding on, uh, and we do not want to let go. We hang on to the people around us. We're hanging on to our dogs and our cats, and we believe that, uh, that our cars and everything should go with us because, man, this world is so great. Folks, that's not the truth. This world is not all there is. God has said that there is a place after this. You see, there's more still in store. Many of us would agree that the, that uh, would agree with that truth. Yet it's easy to walk through life's problems and stress without an eternal focus. It's easy to forget that we're looking down the row at heaven before us. We can get caught up in the here and now when we forget to live daily with eyes and hearts focused on what's important. Tell you what, sometimes that MID bill just distracts us. Sometimes PG&E wants his money, doesn't he? So, sometimes the, the bank uh, that wants that note for your house mortgage. And sometimes there's just not any money in the bank. But what Jesus says, that's not the focus of this life. The focus of this life is to do your best and to do what you can to enhance the kingdom. Uh, the, the, he says, blessed are the poor. Right? You see, God is saving us a place. It will never fade away. Man, have you ever had one of those favorite shirts that, that man, you just want to wear it every day because it is your favorite shirt? Maybe it says it has something on it. Maybe it's uh, uh, like John's got Star Wars shirts. Uh, man, I have all kinds of graphic tees from the past. Guess what happens to all those, those prints? They fade. They fade away. When I was managing swimming pools one time, we were, we put an abundance of chlorine in the water. And how we knew that is, uh, I, don't, I don't know if any of you remember when jams, they called them jams, they were Hawaiian print, long, baggy things that you wore swimming. I watched a guy go off the diving board, and when he came out of the water, his bright red was now pink. It had faded. It had faded away. But God is saving you a place that won't fade away. It's an inheritance that will last forever. You see, in this world, we will endure troubles, disappointments, and pain. But we can take joy in this. Jesus has overcome it all. I'm telling you, that's the good news right there, folks. Our last point, number eight, the resurrection reminds us that he's coming again. You see, folks, the good news is that we have overcome sin. The better news is that Jesus Christ is coming again. Now, we don't know the day or the hour the week or the month, or, or the time when that's going to happen. But we know that Jesus said he was going to come again. Now, my question for you, according to that, is why aren't you living like it? 
That's, that's what we have to do, is we have to remember that Jesus is coming again, and we need to put all of our power, all of our might, all of our strength, all of our soul to be letting other people know that our Savior is coming back to take us up with him to heaven. Live like it. So, 1 Thessalonians 4.14 for since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. You know, the great, the great metaphor of the, the Bible is talking about sleep. And folks, sleep is death. And this, in, in 1 Thessalonians, uh, the, the Thessalonians are, are doing a great job. And this is a love letter that Paul is writing to them, talking about the good job that they're doing. But there is a question at hand there, is what happens when we die? And that's, what, that's the answer that Paul is giving them. And basically, as Christians... We know this truth. This is the answer that Paul gives them. Death will not have the final sting, and it's not the end of the story. See, I don't know where you are today. If you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that Jesus came to this world, that he died and was buried and was resurrected, if you believe that, remember that's the resurrection, if you believe in the resurrection, Death is not going to conquer you. Death will not hold you into the grave. And at the second coming of Jesus Christ, you will be lifted up with all the other saints and you will go to heaven. You see, God in 1 Thessalonians is reminding us that because of Christ's victory over his death and resurrection, there is new life both now and for eternity. And what that means is, if you are baptized now in this world and you continue to live uh, here in the already, you are already a child of God and a child of the future and a child of forever. Right. See, that's good news. You're already an eternal creature after you're baptized. But you're an eternal creature that's waiting, waiting for the end to come. His word promises that Jesus will come again. Though no one knows the day or the hour, we believe his words are true. Now, why do we believe his words are true? Well, we have uh, all this material in the Old Testament is saying he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. And what happened in, uh, when, when Jesus came? He arrived, right? God did what he said he would do. In the name of Jesus, he named him Jesus. He was there. So we don't know the, the day, the hour, but we believe his words are true. And all believers will be caught up with him in the sky. Those who have already died and those who are still alive. You see, what Jesus is promising for you, for me, and for all who believe we will all have new and resurrected bodies in heaven, according to the scripture. And we will live united with Christ, never suffering pain or grief again. We pray with me. God, you are an awesome God. And Father God, we as Christians, we as people living in this world, recognize you as sovereign. We recognize you as holy. We recognize you as our Lord. And Father, we now look at the resurrection and we are in awe. There is nothing harder to believe than resurrection because we see death all around us. We see what death looks like, and we know that it's a miracle for that to be overcome. 
But God, we thank you for the miracle of the resurrection. The miracle of saving souls, the miracle of the lives that are going to be saved for eternity. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.